Jesse Elliott. There we are. Wow, here we go. Volume as a... There we go. Thank you, Alistair and Ali. So we're talking about it being a very special day today, isn't it? And so I said to, you know, Jesse and Kenny here, what special day is it? And what was the answer? Happy Mother's Day, isn't it? And I told them that to go and give their mum, what, what did you do to your mum? Gave her a, what? A big cuddle and what else? Do not give her a wee kiss. Do you want to go and try again? Go on, kiss, go on, give, quick, 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 Kenny, quick. And Mother's Day is not just for those who are actual mothers, but it's also for those who care for others in a mothering way. So well done. Well done, you pair. So welcome and welcome to all who have joined us on the live stream. You're also very welcome here in South Leith. The intimations are as in the print and can't believe we're well into March now and in three weeks' time um, we will be changing to North and South Leith Parish Church and it will be our first Sunday as that new congregation in three weeks' time till Easter. Seems very quick, doesn't it? Where does the years go, as we all say? Where does the time go? So looking forward to that day of celebration. All the words to all the hymns will be on the screen as normal. So let us now just turn to our neighbours side by side, back in front, introduce yourself and wish each other a very good morning, very good morning, very good morning to those on the live stream. The music group will now bring us the introit, and um, as they do so, the Bible will be brought into the sanctuary, and if you could just please stand when that happens, the music group will bring us the introit. <coughs> As we gather, let us give thanks to God, for God is good. Let all who know God tell of their story, from east and west, from north and south, let us tell our story. And let us give thanks for God's unfailing love, and tell all of God's works with songs of joy in worship. Let us worship God. And let us do so by singing our first hymn, All People That on Earth Do Dwell.
Please be seated. The psalmist wrote, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Who will tell of the Lord's mighty acts and make his praises heard? So let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather as your people in this time, in this place. We gather knowing that your love does endure forever. A love that has been poured out upon us day after day and will until eternity. Lord, your love comes in many, many ways. In this Mothering Sunday, we think of the love of mothers. The love that mothers have given to us and we in turn have given to them. The love that those who mothers to others in so many ways, caring for people, looking after them. And that love only comes through you, our Lord. But Lord, this day we also recognize that at time our love is never as strong as it should be. That at times, through our words and our deeds, we fail to be the loving people you ask us to be. Where we fail to care, where we fail to speak out, where we fail to give that loving, kind hand to others in need. But Lord, you are a transforming God, a God that can transform us into the people that we can and you want us to be. So Lord, in a moment of silence, let us come before you with our confession, confessing to you all these things that we can share with you, knowing that you will listen and through your grace will forgive us. Loving, forgiving God, grant your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may once more come before you in praise to worship you and share their love with you, because you are their loving God. And this prayer we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. morning. Oh, sorry, I had to dodge there. I hope you are doing well. Yeah, thanks to Ian for the opportunity to give their first thoughts today. Um, today is Mother's Day, but we are not talking about mothers. We are talking about children. Um, of course, there will be no mothers if there are no children. Um, and so thanks so much, Ian. Um, so I'm wondering, do you remember when you were a child? I know some of us, we started church when we were already old. But some of us might have started church when we were already children. Um, some of us, it started from our baptism when we were little babies and were brought in for baptism. But beyond that, do you remember how you got into church yourself as a child or as a teen? Yeah, that's something for us to think through, if you don't remember. But you remember in the Bible, there was a story um, in the life of Jesus during his ministry. There was a time that a lot of crowd, a huge crowd was coming to him, and amongst them were children. And then some of his disciples tried to stop them. You people, what do you want here? We want serious minds here, and you these little kids. And then Jesus said, no, don't stop them. Let them come to me. 
for theirs is the kingdom of God. I don't know if we've ever thought about that. The children's is the kingdom of God. And anytime I think about this, it reminds me of how important Christ holds children, that they also have a place in his kingdom. But also on here on earth, children also have a place in God's church. Back in Ghana, the um, church I belong to and I, I serve in as a minister, out of about 1.5 million members nationwide, about close to 20% of that number are children below 12 years. And in the congregation where I was serving as a, an associate minister before moving in here, every Sunday we have close to 100 children coming to church. So, and we have a different teens church and we have a different children's church. So if you are a minister, you are a minister of three congregations in one because you are ministering to the teens and you are ministering to the children. And the children have like four classes and the adult service, we run two adult services. Um, but the emphasis today is on the children. Children have become so important for the church today, but also for the future. And so, and if I, I only mention those below 12 years, if you add the teens, they constitute, together constitute close to 40% of the membership of our church. And that's not only for my church, for a lot of the close to a thousand other churches in Ghana. They have children constituting a significant portion. And that's to give us an idea that the children are not only for tomorrow, but they are also the church today. And it's important for us to keep them in, to keep them going. So what do we do? Um, back home, one of the things that we realize keeps the children in the church is breakfast. So in my church, we start, some congregations started, and we realized the numbers of children kept doubling. And so now it's become a policy that every children must feed, every congregation must feed their children every morning must provide breakfast every Sunday morning. And it's amazing what's happening to that. What's happening is that you have children bring their friends, and so every Sunday you have their number increasing. And sitting in church session board, every Sunday we have to review the budget for um, children morning break, Sunday morning breakfast. And now congregations are now encouraged that even before they start building chapel for the adults, they should plan for the children because the number of the children are getting more. So that's to encourage us that the, num the children are very important for the church. But one other important, interesting thing we realized was that some adults come to children first because their children came to church first. So there are some adults who would ordinarily not come to church. But because their children come for church because of their breakfast, the children keep coming and then after some weeks, they will ask, Mommy, won't you go with me? So the children became the evangelists, bringing their adults, um, their, their parents to, to church. And that also goes to emphasize how important children are in the ministry of God and the kingdom of God and of the church. So that's what is happening. But this is the generation in my time. It looks like it's the other way around. It's the parents that bring the children to church. But these days, in our context, you have the children rather having to move their parents to follow them. I don't know if you now remember your case, but in my case, one of the people who played a very important role in my Christianity was my grandfather. He was a catechist. Um, I, I don't know if you still use catechist here, but he was like an elder, a teacher in the church. But he became homebound because of illness. But he made sure every Sunday, every child goes to church. And he has an award for you. Every Sunday evening, there is a party, and he will buy drinks for those who went to church. And I didn't want to miss it. So that was a motivation for me to go to church every Sunday. And then gradually, I developed my own interest. So the point I'm trying to make here is, how about grannies and grandpas bringing our grandchildren along? What do you think? 
spending Sunday with you, say, why don't you come? Come, let's go and have fun in church. And we have some coffee tea in the afternoon. Maybe we would want to think about that and see if we would want to try to bring our grandchildren to church. That might be something else for us. So before I end, let's just do something we would usually do in the children's service. Today, we realize our theme is God's love. So we want to take one of children's songs telling about the love of God. And you know children always sing with action. Sure. So we do it together. Can you please uh, put it? James, go and join that. Start again. Well, we're going to have another hymn shortly. I've got my glasses. Where's my glasses? Eh? Gosh, what are I doing? I don't do that. No, you'll, you'll probably start again. <laughs> Yay! Here we go. We're going to sing again. Now, thank we all our God.
Our first reading is from Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3 and 17 to 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Amen.
The New Testament reading is taken from John 3, verses 14 to 21. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Amen. Jesus Christ, by the power of your presence, open the mind of God to us, that in your light we may see light, 
and in your strength may we be strong. Amen. There's two um, important days this week that um, have helped me think about what I was going to say to you this morning. The first is, as we've already mentioned, today is Mothering Sunday. It's a time one, it's a time where we will remember with thanks, with gratitude, with love, all that we received from our mothers, who from birth gave us life and cared for us, nurtured us, looked after us as we grew into the people we are this day sitting in the pews. Mother's Day is a time when we can take out our mother, or if we're fortunate enough, be taken out by our children. But it's also a time for all those who do mother, be it godmothers, caring aunts, a close friend, a time to share, time to chat, to reminisce even, to laugh. I'm sure you all know that the origin of Mother's Day goes back to times when young women were far from home, perhaps working in service in some big house somewhere, or even working in a factory in another town. And there was a time on this particular Sunday was put to one side and the young women were encouraged to return home to their mother church and their family. And as they walked towards their home or their mother church, in those days where things were much more agricultural, they'd walk along country lanes and they'd pick flowers and then either place them in the church or give them to their mother or family as a symbol of love and care they have for them. It all sounds so idyllic, does it not? People wandering along the country lanes, the sun is shining, picking up flowers with lovely clothes, bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. But there's also many tears would be shed that day, I'm sure. Because yes, for that maybe brief time when they were allowed to you know, go away from the big house where they were maybe in service or from a factory where they worked many long hours. At the end of the day, after this joy with being back to their mother, they had, they had to return to the, the reality of their day-to-day -day toil or servitude. The other event that has shaped my thoughts, and certainly it's something that was celebrated on Friday there, was International Women's Day. And here in the church, we, in the church hall, this was celebrated yesterday. International Women's Day was started way back in the early 1900s. And the first International Women's Day was celebrated in 1911. It's a day that belongs to all. It's a day where women are put to the fore because even these days where we think everything is equal, we all know it's not. And this year it was to talk about gender inequality, if you like, and to look for inclusion and equality between men and women in the world. Because it's still the case that gender parity, if you like, is a word that's used by the World Economic Forum between the difference between men and women in so many ways a recent report still said throughout the world it's 200 years away before there'll be gender parity at the current rate of change. It's different in different parts of the world, but overall it could be 200 years away before that parity is gained. That all women and all walks of life and all parts of the world will be, there will be equality between the sexes. Another damning example from that report is that one in three women worldwide will be beaten or sexually abused in their lifetime, most likely by someone they know, either part, a male member of their family or their spouse. And it's because so often the idea that women and girls are equal 
just doesn't exist in that part of society. That they're seen as property, as chattels even, to be exploited and controlled. Difficult things in this world when we are sitting here thinking, but even in this part of our fine world, part of our fine city, there's abuse going on. There's probably even slavery going on. People are here being exploited, being controlled, and so often it is women because they accept it. Well, they don't accept it, but they have to put up with it because they want to provide the love and the care for their families. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish. These words from John's Gospel that Sally read for us this morning perhaps are very familiar and are used, I'm sure, certainly I've used them at different times of this sort of Christian year so often on Remembrance Sunday. Yet when we look deeper into what do these words mean, and we hear that it is God who so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's a clear statement of God's word, will, if you like, for us all. For a world that God loves unconditionally, not just a man's world, not one just for the rich and powerful, no, God loved the world first, the world he created and gave to us to look after, to nurture, to care for. And he sent his son to save us. God loved this world and all within it equally. Men, women, young and old, black or white, He wanted equality. He wanted unity for us all to love and care for each other. And it's only the people, us people, humans if you like, that has caused all the divisions, the distrust, the hatred, the injustice, the hurt. God made men and women. women. And we know that from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. God created humankind. Adam is the translation from Adam. He made them in his image. Male and female, he created them. God did not create them at different times. Same time. Both equal. God blessed them equally. Yeah, our history tells a very different story how that has shaped in the generations since. So it's no surprise that God had to send his only son to come and save us from ourselves and sort us out. To show that how we do treat each other is not God's will. It's not what he wanted for the world. He sent the light to rescue it. And sending his son, he sent that light to give us a new direction, to transform us, to give us the hope that things can be better. And the light of Christ, even today, as I mentioned earlier, does need to shine in all the darkest places because there's too many of them. So this Mothering Sunday and just a couple of days after celebrating International Women's Day, it's important we realize there's still too much inequality, not enough access to so many things, economic freedom, health. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that all men and women, young and old, black or white, would have life. A life of equals. A life where is justice for them and their bodies. And Jesus came to shine in the dark places. 
giving us all hope for a fairer, more just world. That for so many today, for so many, it'll be decades before they see it. It may even just be a distant dream. But it can change. And our prayer this morning, yes, is for mothers of all sorts, but also for all women throughout the world that they see the justice and inclusion they they so dream of, not in 200 years, but soon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now have some music for reflection, and as that, as we hear that, the offering will be uplifted. But just please, please, stay seated. Let us stand and dedicate our offering by affirming our faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe, mighty creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us once more come before God in prayer as we bring our prayers for others. God of life, you know us and you love us. So be with us now and with those we pray with us. Lord, assure us of your presence and your steadfast love. Hear the words we can barely speak, bring hope and healing to the raw edges of our lives, to those who are broken-hearted and hurting, and to the torn and 
the ragged parts of our world. Strengthen our spirits, soften our hearts, and keep us on your way. God of light and cloud, we bring to you those lost in the midst of so much pain and anguish at this time. We especially pray for women, women in our own land and women throughout the world who are oppressed, who are controlled, who are abused, who feel there is no hope, only darkness, no light, and yet seek it. We pray this day that somewhere in all their pain and anguish we see a bit of light. We see you standing beside them, Lord, sharing in their pain and their anguish and abuse. Lord, we pray that your church today can be a voice in the darkness for so many. For those in our community here who perhaps through drink or drugs or some mental health can be given some hope, can also see some light in their darkness, that they can be lifted up, that they can be assured that things can change, that you, Lord, you change the world and you change so many and you can change us this day. let us pray for ourselves that in whatever way we can as sons and daughters of this land sons and daughters of this world we can take the example of the motherly love we all received and share it share it this day and every day with those that we love and care for and if healings to be had Let us feel your healing touch this day to move us to share and to come together and be reconciled. And this prayer we ask in your name, our loving God, our caring God, our graceful God. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is that uplifting hymn. To God be the glory, great things he has done.
Let us now leave this place. Leave it in the glory of God upon us. Leave it with the glory of God around us. Let us leave it so we can share in the glory of God and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you all, within you all, around you all, this day and evermore. Thank you.